Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to review a super popular book that everyone wants me to review here, which is Advances in Financial Machine Learning. It's by Lopez de Prado. Um, so I have the book here. Again, I have the sleeve off of it. I've been reading it, highlighting, taking notes. Uh, but let's just dive into the review. All right, so let's talk about what he's trying to do in the book, which I give him a lot of credit for, and I think he did a fairly good job. Um, the book itself is trying to balance understandability and practical application also with mathematics and theory and trying to put the two together, which is extremely hard, especially because his book is quite thin. So he's made this very readable. Um, the book itself, I believe, is what, 350 pages. Uh, it's a thin book, but he's trying to essentially take practical, useful advice and then apply mathematical and like, academic rigor to the applications of machine learning in finance, given his experience, his research. Um, there's a lot of references to papers in there, a lot of his own papers, uh, but in general, that's what he's trying to do is put together like usability and the rigorous amount into one, which I think is extremely challenging. And I think he did a fairly good job in this book. So I've heard a lot of people complain that, oh, it's just basic machine learning. I wanted something like super advanced and like whatever. The book does a really good job at actually taking things and talking about how you structure and set data up. Um, the structure of the book I think is amazing. So there are different sections in here. He has a preamble, but then he has a part one, which is data analysis. This like setting up and cleaning your data, as I mentioned, um, labeling, sampling weights, you know, stuff like that. And then he talks about uh, part two is modeling. Um, part three is back testing. Part four is useful financial features. Part five is high performance computing recipes. So I really like the book because he actually goes through essentially what you would do in an entire process of data cleaning, modeling, you know, back testing, looking at all these different components. And he also dives into the fact that the computing, the computer science side, the hardware side, for example, uh, is also important to having good results and good performance. So I think that's a good plus as well. Um, probably the best part of the entire book for me um, is that he talks about in the beginning, the preamble, essentially why most funds fail. And he talks about how having a structure is crucial and important um, because having a structured team, so for example, those that are developing and those that are back testing, doing other things. So in banking, we call this development and validation. We do have structured independent processes. Um, this is crucial for investing firms as well. And I, he points out in the book and mentions many of them fail because you build something and it's built to fit a specific set of data and then most people aren't back testing correctly or you use methodologies that aren't the best suited for your data or more likely you essentially build it so it fits your out of time sample and then your back testing feeds it until you have confirmation bias essentially. Um, it's super hard to get around. Again, having separate people, separate teams, not letting them go across the lines, I think is probably the most important aspect to take away from the entire book. All right, so now what is the book really used for? I think it's somewhat complicated and over complex for somebody who's coming from a background um, that doesn't have a strong math, stats, and computer science background, for example. Um, why? Because you need to understand the theory behind it. You need to understand financial markets a bit. Um, to put it all together, uh, to really, really utilize this book, to really do this in practice, uh, you would need to go and look at all the papers that he references in the book to see how they're actually implemented. Um, he does provide code, which I think is awesome, uh, for Python, and it shows you how to do, work, do workarounds. He also mentions issues inside of Python packages, which I don't think very many people ever acknowledge. Uh, and he provides code again for workarounds around that, saying, you know, this is a failure in like, I don't know, some package like NumPy or something. Um, it's not going to give you an accurate result. Here's the code. This is what we use to actually fix this. So I think it's great and it's stellar. Um, I don't think this book would be a book for someone with a business background. I don't think it's going to be that useful for you. Why? Because I think it's far more technical. It's not going to be something you pick up, uh, you read, it's super simple, and then you implement, and then you trade off of and make lots of money. Um, he's providing just general theory and practice on machine learning and advances and things essentially that make a good structure and a good way to discover data. So it's more about the process and not about finding some loophole of like, oh, I'm going to use this book and make a million dollars. It's not for that. So if you want that, do not buy this book. That's not what it's for. Um, if you want to learn how to apply machine learning into like a trading realm, so specifically in the trading side and investing side, I think it's a stellar book. Um, for me, there's parts of the book I don't agree with, I don't think are correct. 
Um, again, that just comes from my background. And part of it comes from the fact that I don't like there are portions in here where he essentially tries to knock statistics and says, oh, statistics is dumb and irrelevant and economics is useless garbage. And you just don't understand what you're talking about. Um, and it's, eight, you know, normal, like OLS regression and all that and normality curves. Oh, those all come from the 1800s and therefore we've tried it and it doesn't work. Um, from an industry practitioner, I can tell you it's because people don't apply them correctly. So again, in his book, he acknowledges that with data science and machine learning, people aren't applying them correctly, which is why you get terrible results. I think the same applies to the stat side, the traditional econometric side. Uh, so I agree with him on that. Definitely application is wrong, but I don't like that he rubs stats people the wrong way. And essentially, I think he's throwing out an entire side of this that he doesn't quite understand correctly. Uh, but in general, I liked the book. I would actually give this a four out of five stars. For me, it was just a, a real thought provoker. So I'm still reading it. Like I've already finished it, but I'm still gonna go back and read parts of it. Um, I'm going to look at some of the papers. I'm going to dive deeper. It's a really, really good book. Um, he does back up everything he does with academic papers in here. So I like that. It has a rigor to it. It's not just an opinion, which is what most machine learning uh, books out there are. But like I said, it's a four out of a five star. I think you should buy it if you are interested in machine learning for financial applications on the trading side. Um, I don't work on the trading side, but a lot of these provide good structure and theory for developing solid um, models using machine learning for finance. So I'll definitely be using some of these uh, theories and methodologies uh, on the banking side. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.